Welcome to the video lesson about vectors. Today we're going to do a review from physics and math of what you should know about vectors moving forward in statics. So we're going to get started by defining what a vector is versus a scalar. So a vector is any quantity that is defined by both a magnitude and a direction. So it needs a magnitude, how big it is, and a direction in which direction it acts. So some examples of vectors are force and velocity and acceleration. And so these are all things that need to be defined by both a magnitude, how big it is, and which direction it acts. On the other hand, a scalar is any quantity defined by magnitude only, so it does not need a direction. So two examples of this are temperature, so when you measure how, how, how warm or cold it is outside, and mass. So those are two, the difference between a vector and a scalar. So we're going to focus today on vectors, so those quantities that have both a magnitude and a direction and do a review on how to do math with vectors because that's a big part of statics. And so we're going to start by thinking about the demo that was done today in class on the first day where we had the chair and we pulled it three different ways. So in the first instance, we had a chair pulled by some force P, and so that force had both a magnitude and a direction. And we saw that the chair was pulled along the direction of the force, P, and it could get bigger or smaller depending on how much force was given along the rope. And then we did the same with another force. And then we did the same with having two students pull it at the same time. And we discovered that the chair would try to move along some other direction, not along P and not along Q. And so I'm going to represent now, so I'm going to represent the chair as a particle. So that's marked as A in this new figure. And I have my two original forces, P and Q. And we saw that there is, or we kind of deduced or concluded that there is some other force, R, and the, the combination of the two poles, P and Q, makes the chair want to move along R. So we could write that R is equal to P plus Q, and we say that R is the resultant of P and Q, and we can also say that Q and P are components of force R. So we're going to take a minute now to define both resultant and component. So a vector resultant is basically replacing any two or more vectors that act on some point A. There's some vector R that has the same effect as the original vectors. So on my chair, I could either pull, have two students pull along P and Q, or replace them with one person pulling along R. So it's, it's like vector addition. It's the same as. The total effect to the chair or the particle is the same as either the two original components or the uh, resultant. And then we'll define the vector components as two or more vectors that together have the same effect as the original. So in my chair example, if we start with R and want to replace it with two forces, we can do so, and those would act along P and Q. And it's important to note that for any one vector, there are an infinite number of different configurations of components that can be added to, to get the particular resultant. And so let's look at an example of determining one configuration of components for a given resultant. So this example is going to be to determine arbitrary components. So two components where we're going to define their direction, but they're not um, 
acting along axes or anything. So in this example, we have a truck, and it is being pulled by these along these two red vectors, and they are called FA and FB, and we know that the resultant of the truck is acting along the x-axis. Okay, so we're, the truck is being towed by two ropes shown along FA and FB, and the resultant we know has a magnitude of 950 newtons and acts along the x-axis. So I've given both a magnitude and a direction, so I've fully defined the, uh, f the vector. We want to know what are the components along ropes A and B. And so basically we're finding two other vectors that we can replace vector R with. So we want to know how we can get the truck to move due towards the due east, we'll say, um, by pulling along ropes A and B. And because we already have the directions of those two forces, we only need to determine their magnitudes. So my first step here is going to be to redraw this in a more simplified manner. So I'm going to just isolate the particle where the ropes are acting. Okay, so I've redrawn my uh, force system acting on just a point, and I have force A, and it acts 20 degrees above the horizontal, and force B acts 50 degrees below the horizontal, and then I have my resultant acting due east. And you can see here that I've drawn this in sort of a parallelogram approach, and you may recall, hopefully, from previous courses that one way to add vectors is to use the parallelogram rule. So we're going to be able to solve this problem, determine the magnitudes using simple uh, geometry. And so we're going to do this using the law of sines. So you can recall um, or convince yourself by just doing a simple Google search that the law of sines says that FA over the sine of 50 is going to be equal to 950, we know that magnitude, and then this over the sine of 110. So we can solve for the magnitude FA as equal to 774 newtons. Then we can repeat this for force B over sine 20 is equal to 950 over the sine 110, and we'll get FB is equal to 346 newtons. So I'm going to write down here the full definition of the two components. So FA is equal to 774 newtons at 20 degrees, and FB is equal to 346 newtons at negative 50 degrees. So to fully define both those components, I need both a force magnitude and a direction. So I can't write the force with using a vector if I only give the magnitude. So arbitrary components are great, um, but we're going to focus in a little bit more and talk about rectangular components. And so rectangular components are a subset of components. Again, you can resolve a force into any set of two or more um, components. And we're going to talk about rectangular components. And when we resolve force into rectangular components, what we're doing is resolving them into components that are perpendicular to each other and parallel to the x and y coordinates. So let's look at an example, and we're going to keep working with these vectors that we did with the truck. So let's look at just force A, which we know is 774 newtons and acts at 20 degrees above the horizontal. And I'm going to set my coordinate axes, x and y, and then I would like to resolve this into its x and y component. So I'm going to take force A, the 774 newton force, acting 20 degrees above the x-axis, and find two components. One component's going to act along the x-axis, and the second one is going to act 
parallel to the y-axis. So basically what I'm doing is I'm finding two forces, Fx and Fy, that when added together are equal to R, my resultant of 774 newtons. So we're going to solve this using trigonometry and geometry um, of right triangles. So if I look at the right triangle, I know that F of X, that's going to be the magnitude, and you can see I've put these parallel lines on either side of the of the vector, that represents a magnitude. So when you have that, it's just the magnitude. So that's going to be 774 times the cosine of 20, which gives us 727.3 newtons. And the magnitude of the force in the y direction is going to be 774 times the sine of 20, which is equal to 264.7 newtons. So there I have determined the x and y components of force A from our previous truck example. And so now can you uh, pause this for a minute and figure out the components of the force B from the truck example so that if it has a magnitude of 346 newtons and a direction of 50 degrees below horizontal, what would the components be? So go ahead and pause it and then do some work and come back and see if you got the correct answer. Okay, so did you pause it? If you didn't, you should pause it now, go back and try it. If you did pause it, you should get that the magnitude in the x direction is 222.4 newtons and the magnitude in the y direction for that second force is negative 265.1 newtons. So you need to watch when you're doing the math, um, the positive and negative directions, because your calculator may not always get it right. So I know visually after I drew my force vector that this should be going in the negative y direction. So I actually just went in and added that negative back into the, to the um, answer. So this 346 Newton force acting 50 degrees below the horizontal can be replaced by 222.4 newtons acting in the positive x direction and 265.1 newtons acting in the negative y direction. To further help us simplify components and in particular rectangular components, we're going to introduce unit vectors next. So a unit vector a unit vector is a vector that has a magnitude equal to 1 and ha has um, de any defined direction. So a unit vector is used to define direction. And so this is a unit using unit vectors is a convenient way to express a vector with some particular direction. any particular direction. So, so as an example, if I draw some vector u and it has some given magnitude shown here as u with uh, bars on either side, and then acting in that same direction is some vector e that has a magnitude of 1. If I, given that unit vector e, and a vector u that has the same direction as my unit vector, I can rewrite the vector u using some um, vector math. And I'm going to define u as the product of its magnitude. There's its magnitude and that unit vector, E. So that unit vector acts in the same direction. And a scalar, multiplying a vector by a scalar does not change its direction. So I can just have that the vector U is equal to 
the magnitude times the unit vector, and now I have fully defined that vector. So I can redraw this vector as u times e. A special class of unit vectors are called Cartesian unit vectors. And these are unit vectors that act in the same direction as a positive coordinate system. So it's a special set of unit vectors that act in the same direction or in the direction of the positive coordinate system. Positive coordinate system. So really these unit vectors are going to be used to define the direction of our coordinate system. So if I draw a three-dimensional vector, vector uh, sorry, three-dimensional coordinate system, x, y, and z, I'm going to put on here three unit vectors, i, j, and k. And i is the unit vector along the x-axis. j is our unit vector along the y-axis. And k is the unit vector along the z-axis. And so we're focusing here as we get started this first few days just on two dimensions, so just x and y, and, and so we'll only be using i and j. So if I go back to my truck example once again and look at force A and have that 777 newton force, and we previously found the components, the x component was 727.3 and the y component was 264.7, then I can write this force using Cartesian vector form as 727.3 times i plus 264.7 times j. And then I'm going to add my, mag my um, unit on there of newtons. I'm going to finish up with one example real quick of adding vectors using Cartesian units. We're going to hopefully add our two components that we found in the truck example. We're going to add those and hopefully get back to our original 950 newtons acting due east, which was the resultant that we used to find the components. So we're going to use Cartesian units to determine the resultant of Fa plus Fb. So we can rewrite Fa in its Cartesian unit vector form that we just did. So it's 727.3i plus 264.7j newtons. We can do the same for B. So we already found its components on the previous uh, board. And it can be written as 222.4i minus 265.1j newtons. So our resultant is the sum of Fa plus Fb. So this is going to be equal to 727.3i plus 264.7j. So that's Fa. And I'm going to add to that 222.4i minus 265.1j. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to group i's and j's. So I have 727.3 plus 224, 222.4i plus 264.7j, sorry, 264.7 minus 265.1, all that is j. So if I sum the like components, I'm going to get 949.7i minus 0.4j. So maybe not exactly what we started with and what we hoped for, but we probably have some rounding error. So we can find, so what this is now is it's a new vector that has a component of 949.7 in the x direction and negative 0.4 in the y direction. And this is 
clearly not drawn to scale. But now we have our resultant, and I can find the magnitude and the direction of this resultant using trig and geometry. So I'm going to find the re magnitude of the resultant using Pythagorean theorem. So it's the square root of the x component squared plus the y component squared. And if you do that, you'll get 949.7. So we're off by 0.3. And then to find the direction, I'm going to do the inverse tan of 0.4 divided by 949.7. And I get 0 0.024 degrees. So again, this is probably rounding error from when we first found our components. So that is the end of our vector review lesson. Um, so hopefully, if you have any further questions about vectors, you should refer back to your textbook or maybe your physics notes, or you can go ask um, your professors during office hours. But also try the homework problems that will be coming up because that will give you a, a chance to practice. Um, all right, have a great day.